Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, episode 31. JS, he hears the music. He knows we're coming. <laughs> That's right. It's like a little... We're like those special characters. Right, in a cartoon. Appear, there's a sound. Freya FTF has joined. Hello, Freya on Instagram. Hello, Bayrang. Uh, what song is this? I don't know which one. Uh, the first one with the title screen. So, so Bayrang on um, YouTube is asking, what is our intro music? So on Instagram, mm -hmm. if you want to hear our intro music, intro music you got to go to YouTube, which I recommend for reasons that I'll get to in a moment. You're going to need to go to YouTube because we have some great stuff coming your way today. But the song is Olive Tree, the very first one. Yeah. <whistles> that one, just so they can recognize it. Hopefully that didn't come through too poorly. And the other one is, um, what did I call it? You, you're you a are big, big help, help. It, which is a spin <laughs> on our earlier theme song, which, which is just open source music we use for our video intro. So I just jazzed it up a bit, mm, funked it up a bit to be more appropriate. <laughs> um, how do you say, uh, guten tag, Reiner. Hello. <laughs> Reiner's here. Zach is here. What I, did you say? I think I said good day. I'm not really sure. I should oh, be careful. Okay. And Zach <laughs> says, hi guys. We say hi back, Zach. Ooh, hi, hi back, Zach. And Igor, Igor in Spain. Hello, Igor. Fernanda in Brazil. It's me on Insta, guys. Oh, oh Freya, Freya on Insta. That's right. right. Hey, now you're on both. Woo! -hoo. And um, Beirang, the first one. Yes, so that is Olive Tree, my friend. And uh, good. Yes, and Cindy, Olive Tree is the one I really love. So pretty. Mm. Mm. I, uh, I hope I... You, anyway, we'll talk on uh, Discord, guys. We have a Discord. We have a Sunday tea book. We have tons of stuff coming at you today. Yeah, that's right. Means good day. Nailed it. Good one. <laughs> nice. Say that again. Guten Tag. I don't know if I'm saying it right, okay? okay. Maybe go on Discord, get a little lesson from Reiner. Mm. <laughs> okay. He speaks native, okay? <laughs> at least he recognized that. Yeah, yeah. At least he recognized that. Yeah. So, what is in your cup? Here's what is in ours. We're brewing up some uh, Huang Da Cha today. Give him a little show. You're going to show them. I'm going to show you guys on it's the website. Yellow. Yellow tea oh, from Anhui Province. Uh, you cannot see your work. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'm just a little bit. Here we go, guys. Okay. okay go ahead. So I'll show you guys on the website, on YouTube. So we're brewing up some Huang Da Cha. This is a really lovely tea. We got the dry leaf. My mouse We got is... some fancy setup here. You've got the so liquor if you color. Are you Instagram, uh, you're missing out this missing fancy out, yeah. meadows. But unfortunately, Instagram's mm. in my way. I can't see what I'm clicking on. So, <laughs> oh yeah, this tea on the website, guys, also mm -hmm. has... Uh, video with it so you can check out the tasting notes right mm. up from our website there's a tasting video there so be sure to check that out and of course on the website we've got our brief little tasting notes here which we're gonna dive back into today maybe we'll even update them I don't know you've got your three sizes 25 50 100 and of course down here I want to draw your attention to the detailed description oh sorry Instagram I slid, <laughs> have face I talk. slid out of frame I have so much going on and additional information. This is an Anhui tea, which you can see on the screen yes. there. And um, there's even little, even in the additional information, there's little extra tasting notes here. You can filter on those guys if you're looking for something in particular on the website. So I just wanted to point all of that cool stuff out vis-a-vis -vis the website and coming back to us. Hello. All right, guys. So if you're new here, so I see Prof Elsewhere has joined on Instagram. Meow chemist, meow, me owl chemist, I think. I think that's how you say that. Join on Instagram. Hello. Um, what is Sunday Tea Book all about? If you're new to this party, if you're not new to the party, just chat amongst yourselves. I can see tons of chat on the YouTube side. If you're new to the party, Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or article that is full of great information but relatively hard to access in the West, either because it's not translated into English at all or the, tr or the translation is sketchy. And we go over it um, page by page, word by word. Okay, not, maybe not word by word, but yes, actually word by word. And the reason we do that is because over the five, six years I've been working with Jen and her mom, diving into the details of Chinese tea, the details of why the words are like they are and how they work and the confusion that ar arises around them Going through that together is super helpful for everybody. It's been super helpful for me. You guys have been super helpful for us when we struggle to find the word. 
Um, so this has just been a wonderful activity. We're here at episode 31. No plans of stopping. When we finish this book, we're going to find another publication. We're going to dive right in. That is what Sunday Tea Book is all about. We bring it right up on the screen, guys, on Instagram. So jump over to YouTube so you can get the full experience, the full meal deal. Mm. So we're continuing on this book called China Tea written by my mom, Jian Li Wu. So this book really provides a Chinese tea. I always a Chinese, mess up a Chinese this perspective of Chinese tea. A Chinese tea. It's perspective a lot. of Chinese tea. Mm. And it's a great chance for us uh, who has been uh, into tea for quite a while to organize all the information, all the knowledge we have about mm -hmm. uh, tea. And sometimes we might even discover some things that we thought we oh, know, yeah. but there's some misaligned. Yep. And uh, Absolutely. get our turns and names all uh, figured out, uh, get us on the same page so that for future readings it will be easy and um, smooth. Yes, it is a great reference. I mean, it's great if you're just getting into Chinese tea. It's great if you want to come back and, and kind of double check. Every, it's one of those books that every time you read, you get something more. Mm. It's a really great, it's a manual. It's almost, it's a reference really. Uh, and it's available on our website. We put the finished translations after we've kind of gone through and kind of corrected it and fixed all the language. Mm -hmm. uh, that finished translation is in the link down below. So I strongly recommend if, uh, following along, pull that up, jump on the YouTube, follow along with us as we go through the book. Mm -hmm. um, right. Other things we have coming up. I wanted to do some maintenance. Did I, did I miss anything? Talk Your talk coming tea? on Yeah, I wanted, that's it. That's sort of where I'm headed right. now. So just before I say goodbye to the Instagram live people, I've got a special talk coming up on Thursday. It is a jur my journey into the heart of Chinese tea. I can't, I'm going to go over my sort of my tea story from zero to hero or whatever I am. Uh, so six years ago, I didn't know a thing about Chinese tea. Anyway, join that thing and I'm going to go from when I didn't know anything about Chinese tea to what I've kind of learned up until now and how that's been. There's going to be some travel. We're gonna, I'm going to brew three teas, guys. I'm going to do three teas that kind of cover the area I'm traveling through. Uh, I'm going to do three mini trivias. It's going to be super fun. Okay, it's going to be a talk, but it's really going to be kind of a tea party more, I think, because that's how I roll, really. So join me on Thursday at 7 p.m. And you guys are going to see how he performs when he talk and brew. Oh, yeah. there's. Gonna... <laughs> I think we need to do some training on that. There's going to be some long pauses. Don't worry. And uh, I'll just talk about the tea. That's my plan is talk about the tea and the water and the liquor color and the temperature and all that cool jazz. All right, guys. So uh, Instagram, it is time for us. Uh, book, books and teas. This is ticking a lot of my nerdy. Yes, ticking a lot of your nerdy boxes. Yeah. You will love this stream. It's all on YouTube, Prof Elsewhere. Um, so you can go check our YouTube channel for all the back, all the back episodes. Um, but uh, hop over to YouTube now. I'm going to reach in. I'm going to grab Instagram. We're going to say bye-bye for now. We're going to stay on the YouTube and finish this up. Too long ball. Hey, welcome. Hope to see you on the YouTube side. And Would you like to, uh, I just want to say that Prof Elsewhere is drinking a yellow tea as well. Right. Did you... Get to the brew cam? Yeah, brew cam, please. Yeah, let me Thank get down you. to the brew cam. See, we have a brew cam on the YouTube side, guys. But they're drinking a yellow tea. That's all. Tell me why it's not just a green tea. Oh, scoot over to YouTube for that. Awesome. Cool. See you guys. Ooh. There's a lot of uh, things going on here. I know, That's I saw really it. Good. I want to get into that. Good to hear. It sounds perfectly. Your, your, German, your German got it confirmed. Okay? It was. It's, ah, That's great. Later said it sounds perfectly. Wow. Time to think about moving. <laughs> and it's great for your beer love. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. I gotta say, I do. I got some serious love for some German beer. I cannot find a good thumbnail. Good enough. Okay, when you can't find a good one, you find a good enough one. Boom, done. And that's that. All right. So let's let's do dive into some comments just before we dive into tea trivia, mm -hmm. guys. We got some tea trivia today lined up as usual. Mm -hmm. And uh, holy cow, sound perfect. Just a quick question: What is your recommended brewing instructions for Huoshan Huangya? Mm. Mm. Uh, you can reference to our green yes. how to bring uh, brew green tea video mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for a quick starter. That's Usually. a good, good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that the good thing about that video uh, versus like detailed instructions is we don't have your tea in front of us, and that video so gives dark. you. This is better color. 
Yeah. Mm, that video will give you how to deal with the T sort of in a dynamic way based on what you're seeing uh, at the time, which mm. is really how you want to approach T because every T is different. Right. So, um, and what has Reiner got here? I've already had some 96 Hong Kong stored shupu. Nice. Cindy, yeah. I'm drinking. He was talking about some last uh, shupu for the season or something on Discord. Oh, I love this aroma. This tea. Still very. Bold, huh? Bold and unique. You smell very it, unique. You the roasting that. is unique. Yeah, this is screaming Huang Da Cha. But this is one that I like. As a tea drinker, I really love this tea. But if people are getting into tea and coming from the coffee world, I, I love to recommend this to them too because mm -hmm. I feel like it's robust mm -hmm. and bold enough for a coffee drinker to grab onto. You know, you give them a top end green tea. And we've even heard this at our tea table at festivals, right? It tastes like warm water, which breaks my heart, just <laughs> shatters me in two because obviously we don't serve warm water at any point in time. Unless we're serving warm water on purpose. But anyway, we don't do that. So anyway, you know what I mean? Like those, some of those really high-end green teas, even the high-end yellow teas, they can be quite delicate. And I understand that perspective. Mm -hmm. But this Huang Da Cha will help people get into the tea. And if you're mm -hmm. already into tea, it's that nice everyday morning drink. It's a, it's a quick sip. It's yeah. and so it's so, bold. It's effortless when you taste that. Yeah, yeah. There's you know? nothing bad. Nothing sticks in your mouth. There's none of those nastiness. It's just a nice, mm -hmm. it's got that roasty bake, that hints of chocolate. It's a really nice morning tea. I found because uh, when mm. I, uh, I like to wake up and drink some tea as my first thing of the day. And uh, kind I don't, of obvious. I kind of don't want to drink a very good tea because my whole You're not switched senses, on everything is yeah. very dull. And this tea is just wake me up and very smooth and doesn't, yeah, it's perfect. It uh, cleans up. It has a nice brisk like start. It My doesn't tasting... have something that put me back to sleep either. Like right. it was an oh, unpleasant day, kind of want to go back to sleep. Right. It doesn't have this finish. So Cindy's got the Huang Da Cha going with us. That's awesome. Mm. Aren't they nice? She says the leaves smell so nice. And yeah. I have to agree, the dry leaf of this is also, everything about this tea is really distinct. Yeah. You can smell the dry leaf with blindfolded and you will guess, oh, this is Huang Da Cha. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that uh, mm -hmm. yellow tea sweetness we often talk about because this is from Anhui mm -hmm. province and they have a really unique last step uh, of high firing to go through the leaf to dry it. So it really has that um, pleasant toastiness. It really does, yeah. And warming. You probably won't find any other yellow tea. That's right, yeah. And warming, which JS needs right now. He's mm -hmm. sipping black tea, but he said it's so cold that it's so nice to sip some black mm -hmm. tea. So this this roasty has that not the you know physical warming which you always get from pretty much any hot tea, but also that warm roasty, right? Fernanda's got the Jin Meisha on the go. Nice. Huang Da Cha is one of my absolute faves. Nice. Mm. Lolo4711 say hi with a fresh brewed Fu Shoshan. Fu Shoshan. Fu Shoshan. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, some po folks saying hello to each other, which we love. That is awesome. We got the whole tribe. I'm not seeing the tasting video you mentioned. Am I looking in the wrong place? I'm looking at the Huang Da Cha page. Mm. Good question. It's a little bit tricky, Cindy. It seemed to be a little icon in the upper right corner of the image. If you hit that, the video suddenly pops up. Otherwise, it wasn't too obvious. So thanks for the feedback mm. on that. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything we can do, but I hope that helps you find it. Um, and uh, Oolong. So it looks like Fernanda has a, a Oolong today. Oh no, she's commenting on uh, uh, Lolo's. Lolo, can I call you Lolo? Lolo, Lolo. Anyway, T. <laughs> Finishing up, all right, we're gonna need pressure remote for that stream, haha. <laughs> I think we're gonna need a pressure remote. Oh, you mean because oh, I'm brewing and yeah. talking? No, uh, uh, no pressure, okay? I'm gonna be partying the whole time. I hope it's, oh, yeah, oh that's scary. He's really excited for that because uh, it will be a solo uh, live and mm -hmm. he will be very, very happy to uh, get rid of me, so. No, not happy at all, actually, but um, it's going to be a little bit scary. I'm going <laughs> to bring in two them. monitors. Especially when he's brewing and when I'm uh, uh, 
uh, yes. sitting beside it, he gets a lot of stress when he by himself and just brewing. He was like, I'm oh, I can totally do that. Casual and whatnot. Yes. So yes. the teas I've got lined up um, are, um, I'm going to be brewing Bayat Silan. I'm going to be brewing Autumn Teguanyin Premium. And uh, also <laughs> Shomei. All really good. I'm super excited. And switching teas on a live, I don't know, that's going to be so fun. I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to try and have everything laid out so it's minimum effort. But anyway, just, just tune in just to watch me be clumsy live. That should be fun enough. <laughs> um, not seeing the tasting video, so hopefully she found it. Mm -hmm. Wulong, pressure remote, okay, diversified. Hey, welcome, diversified. Mm -hmm. uh, Cindy is asking, what, uh, what time Thursday? Yeah, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern. Yes. So um, translate to your time zone. I think if you go on YouTube, they do that for you, which is kind of cool. So you can also check our YouTube channel. It's already there. You can click the little uh, set reminder and then your phone or whatever you use to get reminded by Google and YouTube will beep at you and mm -hmm. say, hey, Phil. We're joining the Discord because uh, mm. uh, the I Discord it... pops up. Yes. Thank you, JS. Yes, that so is set up so the cool. Plot. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, unusual yellow tea with the roast. Thanks, mm -hmm. found the video. Oh, yay, I have my description work. Yellow tea for me this afternoon. Yay, we got so many yellow tea people. That's oh, awesome. that's great. So let's get diving in then and start doing a little bit of warm up to our tea book because what do we do now before we do? Oh, yo, oh, I pressed my remote in a funny way. I don't do stuff <laughs> like that. What do we do before we dive right into the book? We do something fun. I gotta press some buttons to make it work. I gotta press some buttons to make it work. Can I make this is, it work? It's so it stressful. Feels, yeah, it feels so simple, but somehow the setup is so complicated. I think I can do this first. And then I think I can do this. Okay, guys, here we go. We got tea trivia time coming up. 20 well, seconds. Got a, this little like a passport uh, photo. Yes, we got a passport <laughs> photo, so we're gonna be here. Okay, guys, you got to get your hype ready, okay? You got to okay. chant with us. In th We're going to do this title screen right now. Here we go. What time is it? T Trivia, Trivia time. The crowd goes wild. In three, <laughs> two, one. Get ready, guys. 45 seconds to answer plus a little bit of time on the back end. The first question is, the primary difference between yellow tea and green tea is... One, yellowing, slight fermentation. Two, browning, slight oxidation. Three, yellowing, slight oxidation. Or four, the cultivar used. Ooh, Ooh I didn't give any easy Ooh, ones there. This is a... Even myself, I had to read them. I made these and I had to read them twice to find the right answer. This... Yeah, what's the difference between one and three? Right, right, it's just a, it's a bit picky. I know it's a bit picky. Oh, that's really interesting. That's an interesting floral, almost like like a, a tulip or one of those large, those flowers with the large stamen. Some new heavy creamy. Heavy pollen. Yeah, Heavy pollen. creamy. All right, guys, you got a Ooh. few more mat moments. It's brewing up mm -hmm. your answers. If you squeeze them in now, I think you'll make it in under the wire. We've got our next infusion in 30 seconds or so. You can see that at the top of the screen. So that means our next question. I just thought that would be cute. So people are, a lot of people are coming in with three yellowing slight oxidation. We've got a couple ones and twos popping up on the screen. Nobody, has anybody gone for four yet? No, I couldn't no. trick anybody with four. Really and close, many of you have guessed the right, uh, the right answer, number three. Yellowing is a slight oxidation. Slight fermentation for Rainer, not entirely wrong. It's just a little, we prefer fermentation for the microbial process. Yellow tea is more of an oxidation, an, enz uh, an enzymatic browning process. So here we are. Next question. The ideal water temperature for yellow tea is one, 100 degrees Celsius, two, 75 degrees Celsius, three, it really depends on the tea, four, 90 degrees Celsius. The ideal temperature for yellow tea. What is it, guys? One of those answers. So uh, time signature <laughs> MMA is back with us with a holy Be success. success. Yes, we had a good success rate on that last question and I'm happy to see that. Again, guys, this tea trivia is not all about right answers. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, if you want to get the right answer and brag, that's totally what we're doing this for. Have fun, goof around. Hey, squeeze into the postage stamp. Okay. You got to squeeze in. Look at how tight it is here. 
Like a little post. You're you're the host here. I think that's perfect. Uh, that okay. little window okay. is super cute. Okay, a few more seconds to squeeze in your last answers, guys. We've got uh, some people have guessed four, um, mm. two dash seventy five. We got ones coming in. Mm, uh, but time ben, I don't, I'm not sure if you type two and seventy five with the computer. I think so. Yeah. It's, okay. They ask you to type two and answer. Oh, all together. So I okay, think it's perfect. okay. We'll see. We'll see. Let's pay attention to where right. Ben comes up. But uh, lots of twos coming in. I don't know if anybody will agree. This is my opinion, but guys, it really depends on the T. That's the answer I picked. Um, I can't say you're wrong if you picked one, that you have a yellow tea that says that, but I think it's good to start and think about the ideal temperature for a tea is dependent on the tea. Even if Taeguan Yin says, oh, it's usually this, this, it's usually that, it really does depend on the tea. So here we are, no more time to chit chat about that. I got pushed along. This is really good, keeps me going. What kind of tree slash bush is tea? Is it one, deciduous, two, evergreen, three, palm tree or four a bonsai tree what's a bonsai i saw that in costco the other day like little tree mm. it means little tree. no i think they're shaped anyway we cannot talk about that okay. too much it could be a kind of tea tree oh see what they guess so the <laughs> answers so what have we got here yay holy ego boost time signature got that right so he's got a holy ego boost js says huh and um We've got one deciduous, Ben Moore deciduous? doing the um, leaves fall off. Oh, okay. Uh, time signature MMA goes with two. A few more seconds to get your answers in. We've got lots of Ooh. ones, a couple twos. Nobody's guessing palm or bonsai. I couldn't trick anybody. <laughs> Darn. All right, lots of ones. Lots of ones, lots of, a uh, couple twos, three twos. Hmm, let's see, here we go. Oh no, the next infusion's not for 20 seconds. I think they popped the answers up a little bit before we run down on time. I think so. That lid was so interesting. So here it is, all of you who guessed evergreen, so time signature Cindy and Lolo, bingo. Tea is an evergreen, which if you're a northerner like me, you might be like, what? I would have guessed deciduous before I knew it was an evergreen just because of the leaf shape. But indeed, tea is an evergreen. Um, not all evergreens have needles, which I didn't know because I'm in the north. Ah. Next question. Who is the mythological discoverer <laughs> of tea? I like your number two. I think I missed misspelled discoverer. Cindy, check my spelling, please. She's always good about yeah, checking my spelling. Good... Is it one, Lou Yu? Two, Joe Biden? Three, <laughs> oh, I tried to say that with a straight face. Three, Shenong, or four, Ying Hong? So we've got some guesses for one coming in. Ben Moore, we're always giving the perfect answer. I think okay. the, the app is telling people they prefer to, uh, yeah, it says comment one plus the oh, answer text. Okay, okay. Ben, very on point. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, you can get away with just the number on YouTube. Apparently that's some sort of a Facebook thing because otherwise Facebook will think your comment is spam and filter it. Oh. Few more seconds to get your answers in here. Lots of guesses for three coming in, it seems. A, a guess for one. It's all just fun. Yes, it is. That's right, Ben. This is all just about getting all amped up for our activity today. Joe Biden. Diving into yellow tea. So is the mythological discoverer for tea Lu Yu, Joe Biden, Shenong, or Ying Hong? Nobody guessed four. And many, many of you, oh wow, two, four, six, nine of you got Shenong with the right answer there. Uh, great guess. Lu Yu was my curveball because many of you have heard of Lu Yu, so I threw that out there to kind of trick you, so sorry about that. But a uh, good guess, Lu Yu is the guy who wrote a uh, treatise of tea. Treatise? Classic. Mm, classic of tea. So, next question. <laughs> Gu Yu, grain rain, is usually around, is usually around too long. He never knows when to go home. So Gu Yu is around too long, never knows when to go home is usually around the end of April to early May. Gu Yu is usually around the end of March to early mm -hmm. April or for the 1st of April. <laughs> you like one? I love one, okay. I love one. And uh, by the way, because the previous one has a Lu Yu, uh, here has a Gu Yu. That was like, ah, oh, Lu Yu is around. I don't know if he's still around. That's right. <laughs> So, um, discover er. I knew it. I should have. I, sh I knew I should have spell checked that. I didn't, and then I forgot. So, a couple more seconds to get your answers in. 
Um, time signatures, got some holy lucky guesses rolling. That's what you got to do, guys. If you want to get them right, you've got to take a guess. Put yourself out there like time signature MMA. All right, so we've got lots of guesses for two, end of April to early May. We've got some guesses for end March to early April. We have no guesses for Guyu is always around too long. He never <laughs> knows when to go home. Darn it again. Oh, wow, no clue whatsoever. Mm. Take a guess. And the answer Ooh. is, guys, too, many of you, again, great work, guys. These are, so Gu Yu is a significant tea day, like it's a sort of time frame when often tea is plucked during or just before for some teas. We're going to talk about it a little bit today, I believe. I think that's why I threw it in. It might have been a rando. I don't remember. Oh, I sounded like a... So that's it, guys. Here we go. Time signature MMA <laughs> for the win with five right answers. Way to go. Cindy with four. And Ben comes in with three, even though he was oh, long typing awesome. every answer. Way to go, guys. You're all winners in my book. Uh, many people came in with three and right answers, but it doesn't matter. We had a good time. That's what we're here for. And now it's time to get on with brewing some more Huang Da Cha and diving into our uh, yellow tea chapter. Guys, this is super fun. I'm so glad we stumbled across first Sunday tea book. Uh -huh. Second, we start to throw in trivia. It's just a party. I can't wait till Thursday. We're going to have so much fun. Okay? Right. It's going to be a blast. Yes, wow. congrats, you're time signature. A, you're just a talking nonstop. <laughs> okay, I'll try and... No, no, no. I love it. I love it. It really has that uh, uh, television host that uh, you really get the whole... Uh, yeah, yeah. The trivia brings it out. fires up. You know, you need that. The trivia brings it out. I, I don't know how else to approach the trivia except to be amped up, pumped up, enjoying it. Josh is late again. He says sorry, but... So I mean, you your way. You just bump, bump, bump. No, it's our legs. We now have rolly chairs. We've got rolly <laughs> chairs so, so we can comfy. move around. I can go way back in the shot. Woo! And, and if all... I'm in the way, he just don't. Yeah. Dump, no, dump. the legs poke out. I'm not just... Oh, yeah. I'll just... If I need to move, I'll just hit you See? a couple times. Hit me all the way. <laughs> all right. So, um... Okay, okay, enough goofing around now, guys. Now we have to be serious. Mm. We're gonna put on our Asmir voices. No, I, I promise I'll never do an Asmir tea book, okay? <laughs> I won't do that to you people. Um, congrats, missed mm. most of the trivia again. Ah, oh, sorry, Josh, sorry. Um, don't worry though, don't worry, okay? Um, you can always go back and check it out and you can tune in Thursday. We're gonna have three trivia sessions on Thursday and they're gonna be at different intervals of the video. So if you're a little bit late, you're going to catch one of them. I'm mm. going to do mini trivias, okay, for that. But right now, it's time to dive into Sunday Tea Book. <laughs> Some sound effects, I think, really should be done by voice live, <laughs> just like that. I think so. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, so I'm going to dive into the Sunday Tea Book. Here we are at episode 31. All right, China Tea, as Jen showed earlier on the screen. Uh, we've gone through section one, which covers tea seeking, sort of the um, just understanding the basics of tea. Part two is making, is the part that we're in right now where we covered each tea uh, in sufficient detail uh, to look at kind of some of the famous teas. And now we're down, we've gone through green tea, dark tea, oolong tea, black tea, uh, and now we are in the yellow tea section. We introduced yellow tea last week. Well, what a missed opportunity on that circle. We covered the intro and now we're diving into specific teas, starting with this guy here. But wait a sec, I can't read that. That's right, Junshan Mountain Silver Needle or Junshan, uh, Junshan uh, Yinjian, um, which you'll recognize from Baihao, Yinjian, Silver Needle, Yinjian, Junshan, Junshan. Okay, glad we got that little lesson out of the way. All right, here we go, guys. So. I'm going to read a section. If you want to click the link down below in the description for those of you who arrived a little bit later, um, there is the finished translation is there. So you can pull that up and see um, our finished interpretation of what I'm about to read. Mm -hmm. Junshan Mountain Silver Needle. In the book, Dream of the Red Chamber had said that Miao Yu used the last year's plum blossom snow to brew old Junmei, which is Junshan Mountain Silver Needle. I'm going to keep on trucking for a bit and then we'll come back and unpack. Oh, let me scroll down so you can see those words. As soft green as the heart of lotus, Junshan Mountain Silver Needle has strong bud head and being well proportioned in appearance. Because it is orange inside and covered with white tips, 
It is known as gold covers the jade. Besides this, it is also called Junshan Mountain Silver Needle because the bud looks like needles from its appearance. While drinking, put it in the glass, pour into boiling water. At this time, the buds are standing in the cup and coming upward, then floating up and down, at last slowly down to the bottom of the cup. Soldiers regard them as bristles with bayonets, bristle with bayonets. The litigators regard them as bamboo shoots after a spring shower while the artists regard them as blooming of golden chrysanthemum. All right. I'm going to finish the last two little snippets because yeah. they're very short. Appreciation always before drinking. Features of appearance. It's made of head of buds covered with tips, bright. Enjoying while tasting. Junshan Mountain Silver Needle has elegant fragrance and it tastes sweet and mellow. The soup is orange. There we go. All right, let's unpack this a little bit. The very first mm. paragraph, okay? All I wrote was context. Like, <laughs> it's just so, it's just a, I yes. don't really understand. I think it's hard to understand. For, this guy right so, here, guys. Keyword, okay? Uh, the dream uh, of the red chamber, or dream of the red chamber. What? Is that a Kung Fu movie? It's no, not, does no it? it's a book. As I said, in the book. Oh, <laughs> was it made into a kung fu movie? No, okay. it's not. Uh, a little bit of background about this book is we have uh, like a four, the four, uh, the top four classic book, and this one is this book is considered one of the most, uh, the best writing of ancient Chinese novels and stuff. It's a novel, oh, and wow. it has a lot of myths around it. Uh, don't really know the author. There's a lot of debates on who exactly is the author. The mm. well-known one could be a editor job more than just an author. And also the, 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 the later half of the book was lost throughout the time, which doesn't have an, a close to ending. The ending was written by someone else oh, trying wow. to mimic, but this, uh, currently no author slash editor is very good in the lecture uh, literature uh, field like a really high talent in that so it's really hard to continue the book have a good sense right and also this right. guy puts like as a novel right they so what you just want to back up okay. so the Whoever is the author is actually seems like probably not the author, but the editor more. Could be. Like but a anyway, lot of so the, he's obviously there, there's a, uh, organizations and stuff just to right. study the. Book. So he's an ancient guy, mm. and and it's a cliffhanger in the sense mm. that the ending is lost. Yes. So, and no one dares finish it because it's pretty hard. This guy. There's is so many good. try, but nothing right. like in terms of a written the it's style, pretty obvious. the writing, right. the everything, the the art. The art level is not there. Right. So to, the to end, those who are in that scene, they would yes. be able to say, oh, this is worthy. <laughs> this is the line. It ends here. Yes. Mm. And also, cool. uh, this guy is crazy. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, those people who leak stories before you watch that. Spoiler. He is crazy as spoiler. So little, there's tons of little hints in the first. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Spoiler, but, spoiler is ruin it. Okay, Foreshadowing is tease okay. and make you turn the page. Yeah. Mm. Foreshadowing is the word. A crazy amount of foreshadowing of every character's own life and stuff. Wow. So uh, to make everything mesh together is also very hard. But anyway, it, it is a classic book, uh, Hong Lo Meng. It also have other names like the record of stone or something. They have many names. Used to be a banned book in China in ancient times. So people just... Uh, Was banned? Yes. Wow. Because there might be implication of a big political transition uh -huh. and there's a and also it's talking about uh, uh love stories and all those stuff and uh, uh anyway it's a very interesting thing if you are interested to know more about this book it's a, a worth looking to sure and yeah then uh Miao Yu, uh, maybe yeah, Hai yeah, would be sure. better. that's yeah. one of the characters in that book and uh, last year's a uh, plum blossom snow it seems it means the snow right water uh, for brewing tea right not on plum blossom i think plum blossom is a way to translate but it seems weird if you know plum it doesn't snow it doesn't blossom in the winter 
But I think the proper name for that oh. Mei Hua is actually a uh, winter sweet or something. It's a kind of flower that blossoms in the winter with snow. It smells oh. even better. So it has a gentle, very beautiful uh, aroma. Mm. So that's the snow falling on those petals, on those blossoms. Right. And she collected those snows and aged that for a year. So, okay. So to make to water. Make a, 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 yes. To, water and, and brew tea. T- wow. And uh, all the Junmei, Lao Junmei is the tea that was mentioned in the book. How she, uh, how she, uh, the, the tea she was making. Right. And the Lao Junmei in the book is what we nowadays know as Junshan Yinzhen. Okay, wow. <laughs> it's a little so bit we, and I don't know about you guys, but, but that's interesting, but we didn't get it from this paragraph. Um, that's an interesting point it's too. It's a cultural background. It's hard to just right. uh, and I think translate. Because in the Chinese version, probably mm. not so much information that you gave us is there. Obviously mm-hmm. not, but they. Um, but it's so well known. It's like if they would make a reference to Shakespeare for an English speaker. That's right. They don't need to background it up. They just say it's like uh, you know, like Hamlet's uh, whininess. Oh, sorry if you like Hamlet. I always thought he was a bit whiny. Um, at any rate, okay, cool. We missed that. So that is really fascinating. And then uh, going on to the next paragraph, I don't think I I don't have anything else. I just couldn't understand it because I was just um, culturally not able to understand what's going on there. Mm. So next paragraph, as soft green as uh, Junchen Man is well proportioned appearance. So white tips, um, I think it's important every episode to just come back and because tips again sounds like uh, buds to us English speakers. We know tips sometimes used to refer to buds, but in this mm-hmm. book, it's kind of a mistranslated. It means fuzz. She, mm. They always mean fuzz when they say tips. So, and that makes sense. It's orange inside covered with white fuzz. Oh, now it makes sense. It's covered with white fuzz. So, it has this kind of nickname, which is probably in Chinese quite pretty, but it's just like gold over jade so like jin jin something yu. Jin so uh, mm. there's it's actually a kind of a crafting technique so uh, it means uh, not a gold covered jade but in, in certain patterns certain ways you put gold with uh, jade together to making certain uh, decorative things you can even have that for cups you can have that for um, bracelets like a jade bracelet mm. with the gold Mm. I remember the technique. It was pretty sad when it broke. Mm. Um, okay, and then um, right, and then because of its shape, it's get that silver needle name, and that's uh, that um, mm. covered with the white fuzz. So mm-hmm. that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then while drinking, I think this is one of the things people love about Junshan, uh, Junshan Yinzhen, is you put in it. So this is the description of brewing it here. Um, where she talks about you put it in the cup and the, the needles don't like just lay down or go all zigzag. They actually kind of all... The feature of a Junshan Yinzhen is a, we call that san qi, san luo. Three times rise up and three times falling. So when you brew that, that's why we also uh, recommend a glass to brew uh, right. this tea for sure because you want to be able to enjoy that dance of the leaves going right. up and for down sure. and they're all standing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, the description is understandable here. Um, if you've never seen it before, it might be a little bit confusing. But mm-hmm. basically, the buds stand up. They then they some of them float up. I think if, again, if you've pulled up the finished translation from the link down below in the description, I think the finished translation you did was really good at describing how some of them rise to the top, some of them just stay in the middle and yeah, hover. Yeah, because in the it's Chinese... It's really beautiful, guys. You've got to experience this. Yes, and in the Chinese version, it has more... Uh, you know, the speed is very vivid, how the mm. leaf moves. You know, when they're about to go to the top, they actually speed up. It really yes. has that... Uh, yeah, you can, just, you can just stare at it yes. and you will be like entranced because they'll be it won't be moving and then suddenly it will uh, zoom and then to be there for a while and then come back down and maybe what? stay really really uh beautiful Entr- entrancing what's the word i'm looking for uh mesmerizing, mesmerizing. it's mesmerizing mm. um and then they have sort of how the different different people from different backgrounds regard them right soldiers yes, yes. 
But、um, it's very hard to translate because those are、uh, those are four character words in Chinese. Right.、Uh, and she tried hard, and I think she did okay. Like I don't know I if this should be soldiers, <laughs> but、um, you know they. It's basically when you watch it. I think、mm. the way to think about it is when you watch this tea brew, you will be so. It's so absorbing, so interesting that it. Depending just, on your background, you'll have a. You can come up with a story to go with it. Yes. Because it's so fascinating. Um, okay, so anything else I missed here? So before drinking,、uh, I think I'm good in that paragraph. If there's not anything else we didn't miss,、um, in the appearance section,、mm -hmm. we've got it's made of head of buds, which, which means just buds. Just buds, that's right,、mm -hmm. and covered with tips. So again, covered with fuzz、mm -hmm. uh, and bright,、uh, which I think means、uh, lustrous,、uh, healthy, resilient-looking、yes. leaf. We've talked about that a number of times, and it comes up a lot with it with the quality tea. Some of the sections have a how to tell quality from lack of quality, and that luster. You got to really pay attention to your dry leaf and your brood leaf,、mm -hmm. and you will start to、uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, because I didn't at all. You'll get a hang of oh, this leaf looks really good, and and you'll connect it with the whole tasting experience. So do pay attention to your dry leaf and your brood leaf. It's definitely worth it.、Mm -hmm. And enjoy while tasting. Da, 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 da. No, pretty good, honestly. This is just a little. I think we mentioned last week. These tasting notes are very high level.、Mm -hmm. um, give you a sort of elegant fragrance. Taste sweet, mellow, and the soup is orange.、Mm. This soup is incredible. I'm really enjoying this tea. Jumping out. It's so,、um, so different than、uh, last week's yellow tea. Last、yeah. week we had Da Yuting, which had that typical, I was calling a kind of a butter cookie sweetness,、mm -hmm. and this one has a different, a whole different take on sweetness. I wouldn't even call it sweetness,、mm -hmm. but it does have a pleasant return sweet, and、uh, without any bitterness or astringency, but plenty of bold flavor that. Right, it's a great tea in the summer. I found when you drink that cold. Yeah, it works in the summer. This this tea is really flexible too. I love the roastiness when it's hot in the autumn and winter too. Mhm.、Mm、mhm.、Mm、it's really warming feeling. Very warming.、Mm -hmm. All right, so let's check out some comments here.、Mm -hmm. Whoa, rolly chairs are the best. As up, ways back. Congrats. Okay, let's pick it up at the congrats area where we finished up the trivia. These Huangda cha leaves are so interesting. So I guess diversified is also brewing along with Huangda cha with us. So that's awesome,、um, and great attention to the leaves.、Mm -hmm. um, Rolly chairs are the best. Yes, they are. I was making my mom a cappuccino. Oh,、mm. that's. I think that's his reason for being late. That's a very good. You got to take、that's、care、so、of your mom. Okay, that's noble. I'm very proud of you.、Um, <laughs> Would be nice. Would be nice. Another trivia. Oh yeah.、Uh -huh. Well, tune in Thursday. There's going to be three. <laughs> uh, good son. I think she meant good son、right. for that. And then、uh, Betty, give a thumb up for Josh for being so good to his mom. I give you two thumbs up. Very serious, important question. What should he brew? Everybody, tell Josh what he should drink today.、Um, I think he should drink Huang Da Cha. Uh, Josh, do you have any yellow tea? Drink that if you have it. I agree, Cindy. We are studying at Cindy. I just ran out. Oh, wah wah. And Josh says, and I think you may be thinking of the thirty-six chambers、oh, of Shaolin. God, you know I was a hundred percent thinking of that. I saw your comment a while ago. That's when I snickered because I saw that and、uh, love that movie. Okay, I love that movie. <laughs> so many challenges in that movie. Very cool story. I love the idea. Every time he rolls the eyes, he was like, "I'm doing Shaolin training." <laughs> yeah, we do. We do eye break. We do eye breaks when we're on the screen, right, to try and prevent ourselves from going blind. And one、yes. of the eye breaks is looking side to side. So I always call it my Shaolin, my Shaolin sharp eye. And then、um, uh, Josh doesn't think Hamlet's whiny, and he's not a procrastinator like every literary critic claims. Oh, either it's so simple. He had to. Uh, if he had gotten down to business right away, the play would have been over. Right, that is so true. <laughs> the descriptions of the tea really makes me want to see and taste it. Hmm. 
Yes, Junshan, uh, Junshan Yin Jen has that effect on people and it, it's appropriate. You do want to see it and taste it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, so, uh, um, if you talk about yellow tea, this is the number one. Mm, yeah, stay tuned this spring. I'm not making you any promises. I'm just saying. We don't make any promises. We, don't, we never know, right? Because the way we select tea, it really needs to meet, the stand, meet our standard mm -hmm. of flavor, production, um, origin, everything. So we, can, we never know yeah. what's going And sometimes you will see us go to different tea regions, and, uh, but there's no more... Uh, no tea come into our store from our region. So it's really... Oh, yeah. we're froze. I hope we're not... We're back. I hope we're back. Oh boy, that was scary. Hope everything's okay in streaming land. We just had a little freeze on our screen. So anyway, we're going to head back to the book. Back to our next tea here. Whew. When the free screen freezes, I get really scared. Me too. Okay? I, don't I have that have heart any... sink. Right? So back to the tea book, guys. Here we go. Here we are. Now it's time for Dr. T Q&A. Why the Junshan Mountain Silver Needle could be up and down three times. So Jen mentioned that mm. that's an expression that, um, can you say it again? San Qi San Lo. So that's uh, three, San, up, three, down. Qi uh, and Lo. I guess, I don't know. Just making it up as I go along, folks. And is that right? How could it happen? So Junshan Mountain Silver Needle could be up and down for three times because the bud's absorption of water and being put on weight are not the same. So the head of bud quickly changes, thus causes the up and down. Suppose that the outside buds absorb water and put on weight, then fall down. Later on, the head of the bud enlarges. The ratio becomes small, cause the rising. The buds continue to absorb water and fall down and thus again for three times. Woo, okay. I read that. Why up and down? So that was tricky. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't, it's not very clear, but here's my best guess. Right. My best guess is what this is saying is actually, again, it's Dr. T. So this is actually a little bit nerdy, a little bit sciencey. Mm -hmm. So you've got this bud that's in the water standing up straight it swells up in the water, which causes its density to drop and it floats. And why they stand up, not laying flat? Because the bum has, is heavier than the head. The tip is a little bit less dense uh -huh. than the bottom. So they're not like this. They go whoop, and then they go, it gets so less dense, I pull it up. But then it absorbs, oh, I went off screen. Then it absorbs some water and gets heavy. Oh, I'm heavy, I'm heavy. Oh, sink back out. Absorb some more water, go back up. I don't know. That's kind that's of that's kind of the gist of it. That's yeah. kind of what yes. I got out of it. I no, no, no you, you're, you totally got it. Ah, oh, so um, that is the um, uh, that is why it does that, which is super cool. Yeah. So uh, we'll roll into. I really love Doctor T Q and A. And that is the other one. I'm gonna show them the leaf quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go backwards, guys. Whoa, whoa, backwards show you the little picture in the book of the Junshan Yin Jen. So you can, this picture, I'm not sure how color true it is, but you get that sense of that orangey underneath the fuzz feeling from this yeah. picture. Just for even the picture from the, like the, the, what I see on my screen vis-a-vis -vis the book is yeah, slightly a lot different, different yeah. so I'm not sure. So in terms of a color, just don't be too... Don't be too picky on the color. Yes. I, it's, it's, a, it's a camera yeah. phone scan job. Yeah. So it's not and color it's not treat. a very high grade uh, mm. Junshan Yin Jen, but kind of give you the gist. It's a, yeah. buds only leaf look kind of like that. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we're moving on to Huoshan Mountain Yellow Bud, or mm. as we like to call oh, it. Oh, maybe just uh, because of the name, uh, the previous one, English or Chinese name is a Junshan Yin Jen. I, I know this, uh, and uh, it's the habit of translation. We call that Junshan Mountain. But uh, if you really want to translate, it's a right. Jun Mountain Mountain. You know, right. Shan means mountain. It's Jun Mountain. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. And same thing with Huoshan. Yeah. Huoshan is Ho Mountain. This is mountain right here, this mm. little piece of the word. Mm. Um, and it looks like this if you draw it. I'm going to draw it for them. Watch this. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me get this right. Very good. Okay, so that's, good. that's what the character looks like. That's Shan right there. Nice. 
Okay, <laughs> that's mountain. And uh, so this is Hoshan Mountain. So Ho Mountain Mountain. A yellow bud, Hoshan Huangya. So that's again another reason why you like to keep just keep the whole um, a Chinese name. It's just easier. Mm. Hoshan Huangya. Huangya, yellow, Huang, Ya, bud. Okay. All right, Hoshan Mountain Yellow Bud is the first tea in Anhui's history. Oh, this one has some shocking things in it for me. I learned from this. Okay, guys, stay tuned. The earliest record was seen in Shiji by Sima Qian. Sima Qian. Excuse me. Picking time is generally two or three days before grain rain. Oh, remember the trivia. Uh, pick the one that just began a bud or bud with two leaves, then produced by five procedures. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, go into the... No, I'm going to start. I'm going to just break this up into little sections, okay? Because I'm already shocked and I don't want to lose track of my shock. So first, I wrote down shock? this in my notes. I said, first in Anhui history. Like, I was shocked by that, okay? I'm still shocked by that. Isn't yellow tea, my, my notes again, guys, isn't yellow tea relatively new? Oh. So I was like, what? How, like... Maybe I'm I'm really two thumbs up, two I'm thumbs up. Really confused by that. Mm. So I think this is really your question is gold. Oh, good, good. Because uh, I'm I'm sincerely confused. I and I didn't. We I usually pre-discuss these with her, but we did it this time because I wanted to, uh, you know, let's do this live. Mm. But just hold on to that question okay, okay, okay. because the next section has the quote. So. I will just okay. go through that together. Okay, I like that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And from there, what else did I have in that? I oh, and I had a little like I produced by five procedures. I think it's like five five steps. They're just five kind steps, of saying it's pretty complicated. Five steps. Five making. Right. Right. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on so we can get we can unearth this question. I'm gonna go all the way up here because this is a bit of a funny shaped section. Mm, hang on a sec. I'm gonna move myself. Ding 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 ding. ding. Disappear. Ding, 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 reappear. Oh, I'm, I, we reappeared, we just can't see ourselves. Our view is obscured, guys, but we know we're there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go on. Tribute tea for every dynasty. Hoshan Mountain Yellow Bud was originated from the hinterland of Dabi Mountain, Hoshan Mountain, Anhui <laughs> Province. Hoshan Mountain Yellow Bud is the excellent tea and has, oh, I know why you're laughing and has been famous for a long time. Since Tang Dynasty to Qing Hoshan Mountain Yellow Bud has been regarded as tribute tea. Sima Qian had written in his book, Shi Ji, that there was a kind of yellow bud in uh, Suchun Mountains. Whoa, sorry, too, too quick. I lost my spot. Which can be boiled or drunk. By drinking for a long time, people will feel as good as the immortal. Tang Dynasty Le Zhao's book, Supplement of National History, listed the yellow bud as one of the 14 tribute tea. Okay. 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 So this section and the previous section are pretty uh, rich in history and mm -hmm. the cultural background. Indeed. First, the Shi Ji. I think if you check the finished link on the, uh, the, the description down below, I translated that. I look up a uh, Wikipedia. What there is? How do they translate that in English? Uh, so I forgot what I did. Record of history or something like that. That's a book. It's uh, mm -hmm. written by this guy named Sima Qian. Sima is the first name. Qian is okay. no, sorry. Sima is the last name. Right. Qian is the first name. Right, like right. pretty typical is still still how you guys address yourselves. Yes, I just uh, some. I feel like with the ancient people, I don't feel comfy to put the first name in the first and last name. Like just switch their name. Right. So I just uh, keep that. Um, right. In the Chinese one. The Chinese one. So, mm. and this guy, uh, this guy was around uh, Xi Han Dynasty, which is around two hundred BC. Whoa. Before yeah, BC. So that's pretty old, right? And in the book, it says uh, Shou Chun Zhi Shan means uh, uh, the mountain is called uh, Shou Chun Mountain. Now we call that uh, Da Bie Shan area, Huo Shan area. First, uh, the, the same area, 
but have different name. It's a really long history, Chinese tea name, Chinese geography name, some has been used, never changed. Right. A lot of them have been changing different names. Even with name, you can kind of guess the dynasty okay. or the time. Right, right. So right. that's why in this, it's not a, like Da Bie Shan or it's not Huo Shan. That's the name at that time. Right, Shou Chen. Yes. Shou Chen. Shou Chen, yeah. Mm. And he said Huang Ya, right, yellow, and here is a Huo Shan Huang Ya. It's just, uh, I think, the a uh, more right. accurate way to, a better way to look at it is not to say the Huo Shan Huang Ya we're having today is the Huo Shan Huang Ya that he was talking about. Oh. It's meaning that region making tea. I got and it. that time, they it. call that Huang Ya. They actually boil it and eat it. They ah. saw how that time people drink it, and they actually pointed out you can boil it and drink it. And for a long time, right. you can. Uh, the original was talking about is a way to help you become immortal. It kind of like uh, it's related to Chinese Taoism. Kind of their goal right. is that right. normal people become God, like a, a live forever kind of thing. Right. That's their goal. So. In modern language, and same with a lot of things, it means it's really good for health. Yes, yes, that's what I thought. Yes. But I got that reference because we watch, uh, not watch, but you see that also in some of the fiction movies about the, the, the gods and those people who rise up and become, mm -hmm. get better and stuff. Yes, so, yes, a lot of Chinese legends and myths have those human, like where you can have, uh, you know, temples and mm -hmm. stuff just for those uh, humans. And so drink lots of Hoshan Huang Ya so that you can like run along bamboo trees and stuff. Okay, so yeah. so I don't know if that answers you, but I do want to point out that like China it does. Has... It fully answers, right? Okay. It, it's not because that's why I said like the yellow tea in the context of what we're sipping and what many of you guys are sipping right now mm -hmm. is, uh, or if you go and pick up a Hoshan Huang Ya mm -hmm. and you're sipping that. That's not what they're talking about. That five steps they're talking about is those ancient steps, which would be cool if those... No, are... it's a, oh. a more current. Oh. Yes. Only the first sentence of that paragraph. Oh, you're right. You're right. Then this is the, talk uh, about this the is tea the, per se. This is the modern procedure. Yes. But what they're talking about since ancient times was actually not. It was just the tea in that yeah, region. Just mentioned but it was that called just... yellow tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yellow, uh, okay. Huang Ya, yellow butt. They Yellow just body. have that name. I see, I see. So here, uh, the reason I want to point out is, uh, first, we have a, a China has a long history of, you can see the same character, same name right. that appear that. It doesn't mean they're identical things from right. today and previous times. Right. And also, you can see different names. They might be referring to the same thing, like yes. this mountain and thing. That's why we're here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to sort and that out. I found in the West, in general, people are more uh, cautious to say those kind of things. We have a long history of uh, uh, how many uh, how many years. But I found in China a lot of uh, a lot of times, if you go visit tea farmers, so sometimes they hear say and start to tell that for people who come there to sell tea. Right, because it know? makes a nice story. Right? Yes, it's mm. nice a story. So a lot of the uh, the super long history of a tea uh, where sometimes you hear people say oh my family has been making this tea for thousands of years right and, or like uh, this the, it, it's not like that right tea has been changed right. there's That's no tea point. that we see today is identical to mm. thousand years ago yeah even then according to text that they could share the same name but they're not the mm -hmm. same thing mm -hmm. right yeah so that does totally Help, that totally explains that. So it was it was around in whatever form it was around called Huang Ya, mm -hmm. yellow bud, mm -hmm. uh, and it's and it was a tribute tea yeah. even at that time. So wouldn't that be cool? The tribute tea was in Tang Dynasty. Mm. This guy was uh, written that a national much earlier, yeah. A supplement of national history that's in Tang Dynasty. Yeah, Wendy right here. Zhao. Yeah. It's a very, uh, very important book to history uh, people, pe like historians, the, historians, uh, to give a lot of a reference to what happened to that certain period of the Tang Dynasty. Mm. Uh, a very uh, credible, credible book. Uh, yeah, credible, like credible. because it's a first hand. 
It's yeah. first hand, and this guy is a very reliable first hand experiencing like a, a lot of he record uh, records a lot of politic uh, uh, rules and things and things happening. He was the first uh, hand experiencing. He was academic, has a good academic history right. and stuff okay. like a reliable book, reliable person right, read right. those. He not only wrote the wrote a book, but he was a trained historian writing a book. So it's yes, gives it yes. Even it's not I write a history of today. It's right. basically useless. Which is still super valuable a thousand yes, years from now. Yes, but it's not a first hand. Caution. It's not first mm. level reference. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So appreciation always before drinking. Uh, that's really fascinating. I'm going to be stuck on that for a while, but I think we better move along. But I'm really oh, yeah, yes, fascinated yes. by those old sure. procedure. It reminds me of the green tea cake we had the um um we have a tasting video of that if you want to check that out we actually mm. we tried to even make that similar to how they made those that was yes. a green tea so it's it total... was the last year or something we yeah, had that uh, uh, we put under the green tea category but just strictly speaking it's not a green tea more it like an ancient more, tea right right mm. replicates how the lu yu uh, their mm. time enjoy tea the whole process was according to the book Mm -hmm. So it was made into mini cakes and really yeah, hard. Yeah, these thin, hard cakes. Yeah. And uh, we tried brewing it. They used to brew it with like spices and stuff. So we tried that. And check out our video. I'll link it because uh, it's pretty funny, our reaction. Um, yeah, Lu Yu tea cake, we called that. Yeah. So, but just to say that the history of, I think it's re the important takeaway for you guys out there and for mm -hmm. me to remember and all of us to remember is that um, right, tea it has been around in China for thousands of years, but, but not like this. The six categories we have are modern-ish, depends mm -hmm. on which tea and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, just keep that in mind, like you said, with, mm -hmm. the, with the way the stories go and just keep a clear head about that. Mm. All right, back to appreciation before, always before drinking. Feature of appearance, straight, lightly stretched, even like tongue of sparrow, verdancy with tips, mm -hmm. enjoy while tasting. The soup is clear and yellow, uh, sorry, clear and yellow green, durable and elegant fragrance. It tastes fresh, mellow, and memorable. Um, okay, pretty straight up. Uh, again, tips are fuzz, so it's, uh, it's green, verdancy, uh, green with tips, with fuzz, or a green with t fuzz. It has that sparrow tongue, which refers to kind of the shape of the, the mm. bud opening, right? Which is yeah. kind of cute. I don't know it's if there's one, one down here that, or one, one up here one. that... I don't see anything. Let me know if you see anything jumping out. What are you trying to Sparrow. Look? I want to see the sparrow tongue if I can. Ah, but it, this sparrow one, tongue, that's a certain plucking standard. Yeah, it doesn't jump out. No, doesn't, sometimes you can pick a leaf that look a little sparrow bit like... Sparrow tongue, yes. It's a, it refers <laughs> to really early pluck one right. bud, one bud, two one, leaf. One bud, two leaf, right. The thing is, one bud, two leaf in different times, so they look different. To right. have a sparrow tongue, that's why... It has to be tongue. early. It has to be early right. and a certain time. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So the soup is clear. And what did I have for this section? Uh, no, that was pretty good. The soup is clear, yellow, green, durable, elegant, fragrant. I give that one a big fat check mark. Yay. <laughs> and if we're going to be immortals, we might want to know how we're going to be immortals. <laughs> Knowledge about tea. They're your road to immortality here on Gen T. Of course, I'm kidding, right? Um, the, the health benefits of tea mm -hmm. are many, but um, you know, don't overdo it. You still gotta have a great lifestyle to live healthy. So here we go. Knowledge about tea. Hoshan Mountain Yellow Bud have good healthy effect. It's full of aroma and biochemical content. According to the tests in Ministry of Agriculture of Tea Quality Testing Center, that there are 46 kinds of aromatic compounds in the Hoshan Bud which has higher alcohol content in the article, five, right? Five times more than general ones. At the same time, Hoshan Bud also rich in amino acids, polyphenols, and other biochemical components. Although it cannot be for a mortal, but often drink it certainly helps prolong life and do good for health. <laughs> Tune in Thursday for more on prolong life. Okay, I'm gonna talk directly about that because it's fascinating. Okay, tune in on Thursday. Um, but I'm not talking about it anymore right now. So did you, did you, did your eyebrows go up with the higher alcohol content? I think yeah. I thought you I was like, what the what? That's my question mm. in this section is. I don't know how to translate. Did they mean like polyphenols? No, or? no, it's a kind of a, 
it's a kind of a aromatic chemical like you would find in many plants. Xiang Ye Chun. Ah. Okay, so you it's just this this so guys. If any of you are getting excited about the alcohol content in the alcohol. tea, <laughs> calm down, calm down. It's a mistranslation. Okay, right. sorry. Bum, bum. <laughs> Other than that, though, a good it, basically what they're saying is there's all kinds of cool stuff mm -hmm. in the tea, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you guys knew this, but tea, in terms of complexity, is one of the, if not the most complex plant leaf that out there. A plant compared to coffee bean compared to grapes it is incredibly complex that is and if you think about it how else can we get all of those flavors from all it's all the same fundamental leaf processed albeit processed differently but you've got to have the content to be able to react to the processing to generate the differences of oolong mm -hmm. yellow tea white tea green tea black tea dark tea unbelievably different one leaf <gasps> It's amazing, right? So basically, I think that's what it's getting at. And a lot of that junk that makes it, I'm just kidding about the junk, but a lot of those complex chemicals, polyphenols, what have we got, amino acids, those are what's contributing to the flavor, the sweetness, the deliciousness of the tea. Right. <sighs> no alcohol though. No alcohol. Too bad. Thank heavens. <laughs> Not a drink from tea then. Oh, yeah, I know. It's a bummer. I was shocked too. All right, so that wraps up that uh, today's section. Next week, I'm just gonna give a highlight since mm -hmm. I'm on the book. We're moving into, if you recognize that, I think that's by Cha, mm -hmm. White Tea. Yay, I got it right. I'm starting to recognize characters. So next week, we're talking about Bai Cha. Um, and, but before we do any more talking about next week, let's bounce back to the comments and see what's going on. I saw lots of chat mm -hmm. in here. Taeguanyin, Gushi, were we up here? I remember. No. Oh, Gushu. Wow, guys, look at all these comments. We're going to need like a, a, a moderator soon. The description of the tea really, yes, good one. Makes me want to see and taste it. Right, talking about the... Um, um, uh, Junshan Yinjen. I knew Yinjen, I just couldn't get the mountain. Jun Mountain Yinjen. Uh, I like the sound of the Gushi Shu. <laughs> Auto correct. Oh no. Take one yin. Definitely take one yin. Sounds so good. Oh, in the absence of yellow tea, should I pick some take one yin dark roasted inside bitter melon mm. or gushi shu? <laughs> gushi shu. Gushi shu. Mm. Sounds good though. I really like that. So cute. Gushi shu. Gushi shu. Yeah, right? It sounds more like a Japanese, Japanese tea. Japanese, yeah. Right? Uh, if the shu is not gushi, go for the take one yin. <laughs> Yes, Cindy loves Dr. T q and I love Dr. T q and I still don't have a little jingle for it, but... Uh, you do? Oh, I sing one. I, I want to get a little fancy something. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Musician in action. Ben Moore, love the fuzz, but less so on Dian Holmes. Hmm? Oh, I like fuzz everywhere. Mm. And um, the Huang Da Cha has that multi... Yes! Oh, oh thank you, Diversified. Oh. I couldn't... Nail it this time, uh, but mm. malty is exactly what, uh, what it has, that, that malty richness, robustness. Reminds mm. me of sugar snack cereal. I don't know that cereal. I think that's a, a USA cereal that we don't get here. <laughs> but uh, but just based on the name, I want to taste that cereal. Almost like burnt sugar. Mm. Yes, burnt sugar and grain, right? Mm. Burnt sugar and grain. Mm. Fantastic tasting note. Wow, I'm writing it down. It's Malty. so helpful to hear what people say, and I yes. smell that, and I totally agree. Totally what agree. you said. I wrote it down because I'm gonna go update the website. That's how much. Speaking I love of it. which, we had a, we, we mentioned that a while ago about the conditioner that quote unquote was supposed to be coconut smell, which I don't think it was coconut at all, but he agrees. And I, yes, no, the I, package I, also says coconut yeah. uh, and stuff. And the other day, I realized that, that smelled like a cream peach, like a really peachy to me, not coconut. And with a cream, that heavy thing, it wasn't a coconut heaviness. Okay. It was a cream heaviness with a peach, which mm. I also love. It was love definitely that creamy coconut. Yeah. So just wanted to throw out that uh, there could be something that is quote unquote what I'm supposed to smell, but I really, right. really yeah. don't. Don't have that in me. And it's, and yeah. it's normal, I think. It's, it's really normal. It's how we each 
interpret the uh, the aroma the taste the whatever mm. it, we had to talk about it at that time because it was so interesting to see how we're definitely smelling the same stuff in the air we're in the same right. room but we have a different a whole different perception so that's where sharing these tasting notes it's becomes really, really helpful. helpful yeah um ben moore love the fuzz josh says my theory also for bobbing tea needles has always been that the joint where the leaf meets the stem contains more air bubbles that causes mm. it to float vertically and that some buds have do they flow see i thought it was the opening that would be the, on the top but i might be wrong i don't know now i'm going to pay a close Put close attention openings on the top because mm -hmm. where the stem meets the leaf then would be at the bottom mm -hmm. right so okay you know what because the stem is heavier than i leaf. think it's denser yeah yeah and then um and then some buds have air bubbles yeah it may be air i think it might be more the spongy nature of it changing but who knows mm. The actual bub portion. That's and my also theory. How cool tightly theory. Wraps. And how tightly wrapped they are, right? And decides how fast they can how fast they the can open and absorb, and right? The history is really interesting. One of the things I love about tea, mm. it is fascinating and uh, long and complicated. Uh, really, really interesting history. It's really interesting. I like to explain that to him so that he can mm. get it, but it's really hard for me to explain that. Uh, well too because it's so complicated I would have to try to explain to a certain degree but not involve a lot mm. yeah because so there's certain times I have to go explain yes, to yeah. say it so there's no bottom right it's like a bottomless pit it's so you can get as detailed there's so much information there mm. and and I might I might just eventually fall asleep no I'm just kidding so you do <laughs> I do yes it's true the history is really up and then I think oops Sorry, my, I'm a little bit... Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. I think it's also the fuzz effect on the water. Possible. Mm -hmm. And JS says, tea drunk. I'm not sure why. Maybe was that the alcohol comment? Yeah, I think so. Not, a, not drunk for tea. Any uh, alcohol. Maybe caffeine was the word? I'm not... We're not no, 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 it was it, that... It's it was a caffeine. chemical it's a, thing. It's an aromatic uh, chemical. I think certain uh, essential oils have that. Mm. And rose might have that. Xiang Ye Chun. It's a kind of a... Uh, Aromatics. Right. It's, it's an aromatic, which is what they're called yeah. in tea, like yes. the tea scientists. I think the what happened to the, why it translated to alcohol because it's a, it's a, in the chemical alcohol that's kind of a it's base. In that family. Yeah, yeah, that family rather than straight up. It's a alcohol. volatile. It's yes. a volatile, yes. probably. Yeah. All right. I got to watch the table. Don't shake you guys too much. That's so amazing. I always describe certain teas, especially potent shampooars, as having a kind of liquor slash alcohol aroma and kind of pleasant afterburn when you drink in a good way. Mm, kind of like a whiskey. Yay, my fave tea. Like having a sweet liqueur. Time Signature MMA says, yum, white tea. Yes, coming up next week. Yummy white tea. Fernanda says, granola taste, green, multi, and sugar, and dry fruits. Ooh. What, is she having Huang Da Cha too? I miss what maybe he, she summarized ah, what we ah, maybe, yeah. said. Mm, mm. I like that. JS, white tea should be interesting. I've stayed away from them for a long time. Oh, time to dive back in. Oh boy. Time signature MMA. I like white tea. It's supposed to be super healthy too. Been drinking Tui Ming for a while, but I'll, I'm now trying out Pai Mutan. Oh, Pai Mutan. I don't, yes. Those are uh, like Cantonese kind of style talking, no? Yeah. Dees versified. I have stand corrected. It's honey smacks. Oh, honey smacks. I have heard of those, but again, we don't have them in Canada. <gasps> oh. I just noticed that especially when I make a high by cha, a high by cha, about half of the spears float upside down. Oh. oh. Wow. Stem up. Interesting. Angie by Cha. Oh, Angie by Cha. He got uh, auto corrected oh. up there. It's <laughs> anti by Cha. Right, right, right. Anti by Cha. Yes, yes. That's cute. Which, anti is, which is actually Hey Cha. Right. <laughs> All right. So that's it. So next week. Mm -hmm. You done? That's okay. it. I'm at the bottom. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yes, summarize it. Auto correct. Oh, right. <laughs> Thinking. Into thinking yellow tea is Angie by Cha. Flavors are very close for me, almost meaty. Mm. Mm. And that's probably coming back to the, the comment in the tea knowledge section where it talk about the high amino acid mm. in, um, 
What was the last one? Hoshan Huangya. Angie Bai Cha is also a characteristic high amino acid. So you one get that. One of the highest. You get that umami flavor really. Yes. Uh, we call that chicken stock. Mm. And Ben commented, puts it in the steak family. Flavors are very close for me, almost meaty like steak. Mm, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, the vegans will understand. I think it's just, it is, it has that amino acid sort of thick, sien, umami kind of vibe. Betty, looking forward for next time. Take care, you guys. Yes, take care, Betty. All right, so what's coming up? Next Sunday at 1 p.m., we've got Sunday Tea Book episode 32. Mm -hmm. We're gonna introduce white tea Thursday. I'm gonna journey into the heart of Chinese tea with you guys. I'm gonna bring you along with me. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna drink three different teas. We're gonna drink Baya Cilan. Three. three different teas. Oh, See? Okay. I thought you said three, three different, different teas. teas. We're gonna drink three teas. Baya Cilan. We're gonna drink premium autumn tag Guan Yin and Shou Mei. It's gonna be delightful as we wander around mm. in the heart of Ch Chinese tea land. Uh, we're gonna do three mini trivias, so it's gonna be super fun. I've already got them ready, so they're already out there. They're guaranteed to happen. And uh, <laughs> I think that's it. Stay tuned for more videos. If you like this kind of content, please do give us a thumbs up. It mm -hmm. really helps out the channel. If you can just reach down there and click the thumbs up. Mm -hmm. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe mm -hmm. and hit that notify bell so you'll be reminded when I go live on Thursday or whenever we post a new video. We yep. do all kinds of cool videos. So um, guys, have a great Sunday afternoon or evening or morning, Monday morning. Monday morning. I don't know where you are. <laughs> Wherever you are. Uh, until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.